Okay, we're going to talk about how to set up pours on an S3 bucket. Um, after logging into your S3 account, we can go to the bucket, select it, and in the properties on the right side, there's a permissions tab. And so to add pours, we want to add pours configuration. Now the allowed the various things you can set will change depending on what you want to allow, what kind of pours request you want to allow. If you want to just allow Gets and you just allow gets. If you want to allow uploads, then you change and add posts as a method of the input. You can also restrict it to specific origins so that only requests coming from that specific origin will be allowed. The other thing you need to make sure is that this the permission is added for authenticated users, depending on what the permissions are for the, for the, for the contents of the bucket. If they are public, um, then you only need to do stuff if you want to allow people to enumerate the contents of the bucket. If you want to sign URLs, then for authenticated users, you need to allow for lists of uploads and deletes. And so that's a short overview of how to set up those configs for uh, a bucket. Cool. Any questions? So it looks like the cores configuration is the at least the XML for the cores configuration is specific to Amazon. That's something that they uh, yeah. created. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, it's just setting specific headers for say Nginx. And do you have to set this up? I, I noticed over here on the left, we have all these open tapestry domains. Do you have to set up cores for every single one of those, or can you set up cores for something like star.opentapestry.com? No, it has to be set up for every single one. In the case of the open tapestry ones, they were just public permissions to read. And so, and they were uh, embed as. Either on creation, we were just um, setting up the course configuration, or um, we were, um, or they were just all public resources that we could just access. Okay, but we were setting those up programmatically. We didn't have to come in here and set every one of them up by hand. Yeah, correct. However, um, what. Well, one thing we've learned is that rather than setting up a bucket per account or a bucket per organization, we only want to have a bucket for per environment and then we restrict inside that environment because Amazon restricts you to 100 buckets per account. Now you can request more. But if you kept having people sign up, they kept having to request more and more to get the tricky. Whereas the best kind of recommended practice is you do a bucket per environment. And you could do like environment and types. You could have avatars, production, and like user uploads, production, and that kind of thing. But uh, programmatic, we, we've 
we've learned that programmatically setting up a bucket per account is not the recommended way to do it. Okay, so we would we should probably do a little bit of rearchitecture in Open Tapestry. Yes, and we if we haven't done it, we can. We've done it for other projects. So. Okay, that makes sense. Now I didn't talk about cores itself, which is um, something you run into. So it's permissions you have to set up when you are dealing with fonts or with XHR requests, or HS requests. Um, cores is what allows you to relax the same origin policy that browsers have for the names. So if you add a font or you're trying to look at some resource and the browser says something like access control not allowed, that means cores is not set up correctly. 